My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the process along the way. So you guys, tonight we are starting the embroidery of the month. This little cute little bee kind, little bee. I'm excited for him. Uh, I'm going to show you how to trace it onto a piece of fabric uh, with a water soluble marker, like a, one of those blue water soluble markers. Uh, if you have the bundle, it comes with a stick and stick sheet. So I'll show you what that's like as well. Uh, so thanks again guys for joining me. Hello everyone. Um, I'm going to just quickly see if I can get this video up and running again, you guys. So hold on a moment. Thanks for bearing with me. All right. So some of you may have seen some of the uh, test recordings we're doing over the weekend. Uh, we'll actually uh, some of that is, there we go. So you won't see all of that <laughs> tonight. Tonight we're keeping it the same. However, we are hoping to move towards some new, uh, stuff again. So I'm excited for that to get going. And yeah, we actually may be moving to YouTube a little bit. So I'll, I'll uh, keep you guys informed about that later this week as well. So, all right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we will get going here. Bumblebee time. All right, you guys, here we go. So, I have the little bumblebee here and uh, um, I actually have, I printed this off from the PDF. So I have the PDF open on a, a website browser here. So you should have received, if you've purchased the embroidery of the month, whether you have the pattern or you have the uh, bundle, you should have received an email. It'll be your email receipt actually, and you'll get this either way. So you'll get the PDF if you get the bundle as well. Um, so I have just, so here's the page that has all the stitches uh, with what stitches to do. So I'm gonna have this open on, on my screen here while while we stitch so I can have that as a reference. But for now, there's some instructions. For now, I have just printed out the trace me pattern onto a piece of paper here and we are gonna give that a little trace tonight. So, all right. All right, so I also wanna show you guys the bundle and uh, here's what comes in the bundle. So this is a little bit different uh, than just printing it out. Uh, the bundle has, I'm gonna actually use the fabric from this bundle. I only have three of these left, I believe. Um, so uh, there are a few still available. So you can still get them. I will still be shipping this week. Um, all right, and we'll just kind of see what happens. I know there's a lot going on right now. I have um, I have a couple employees and I'm having them stay home. Uh, so uh, we are still shipping, but it'll just be uh, John and me shipping everything out. <laughs> so all your orders um, that you'll be getting soon in the mail, uh, John and I ship them today. <laughs> So that's that's how we're doing it. We don't have to interact with a single person at the office. Um, so uh, uh, we're hoping that that will help things. So that's our little isolation, but we'll still be able to ship a little bit. All right, so in the bundle, you get a, a cute little bumblebee uh, necklace. I'm super excited about this. I think it's just adorable. Um, then you have a piece of fabric. And I'm gonna actually steal this. I'm gonna use this tonight. So I'm gonna trace this design onto here. We'll give it a little press first. And you'll get all the floss. And I'm gonna use this floss as well. I think I'll save, I'll save these two though, because maybe I can make an extra bundle um, for someone. So maybe there'll be four bundles left instead of three. 
But I just want to show you. So what this is, this is a piece of uh, material called just uh, called um, Selkie Stick and Stitch. And what it is, is you can print a design directly to it. So instead of printing, printing the pattern to a piece of paper like I'm doing here and tracing, you can print it directly to this stick and stitch material. So you can just basically skip the transfer process altogether because I'm, I'm printing it onto here. And then this is like a sticker. So it's on a little backer sheet. Let's see if I can take it off here. Come on, little guy. There we go. So it comes off of the paper and then this is sticky. You put it you stick it onto your fabric and you can stitch right through it. So I'll save this one so I can so I can put one more uh, embroidery bundle online just so someone else can get it yet because I think we only have three more. Um, so we'll do that. Oh, you've never done this before. Which side for this? Which side goes up? Uh, there will be only one sticky side. So you will, you'll be able to tell for sure. Um, the paper backing is just to protect the sticky side. You won't keep that at all. You don't need that. Uh, but you'll put the sticky side just right on top where you'll be stitching. All right, you guys, let's trace our design. So I'm going to do it in, uh, oh, in the printer, Gretchen. Uh, you can do a test. So uh, it depends on your printer. For me, I put it right side up and then it goes through the printer and comes out the printer upside down, but you'll want to do a test. So I would just take a separate piece of like a blank paper and I would write like top on, on here. So you want to see like, okay, if I put it in the top with the writing on top, which would be like where I want the design and I set it in my computer, how does it come out? If it's printed on this side, then you'll know you want to flip it around. If it's printed on this side, then you'll know it'll be correct. So I would do a little test on paper first where you write, you know, how you think it's going to end up and see if you're right or wrong. And then if you're right, then you can um, put the uh, the piece in. So you are printing on the, the rough side of it, not, not that paper backing side. All right. So I'm going to give this a little press and uh, we'll get started here. So I have my have my uh, my mat here get that out quick and I don't really need to press this uh, it's pretty flat but we will be tracing it so the flatter the better I, I feel like so let's just give it a little hit of heat here I think that's plenty good all right so I am tracing this design on a light table it's just a little light table here I've had this light table for probably over a decade. They make them cordless. They make them a quarter of uh, how thin they are now. And they make them for cheap right now too. So if you go to Amazon, you can probably find a way better light table than this for $20. Um, and they, they do come in handy. And you can just, um, they're so thin that you can just slide them away on a bookshelf. Um, but they, they're so handy, especially for um, tracing a design here. So here it is on... My phone kind of autocorrects, but let's just um, see what it looks like with the fabric. So this fabric is actually pretty light, so I could I could trace through this no problem. But if it had a pattern or if it was a little more dense, you know, a light table works really well there. Now I can see everything super perfect. Uh, if you don't have a light table, just throw it up on a window. So this is what you would do, and this is what I'm going to do here too. I'm going to just take some painter's tape, or any tape really, but... You know, I like the painter's tape because it comes off easily. And I'm going to tape my design to my light table. And if you're using a window, just tape it to the window. You know, then you don't, then it won't move around everywhere, which is handy. Oh, one other thing. There is a, a little guide here. So if you're printing it out, you'll want to measure just to make sure that uh, your printer is printing your piece correctly. Unless you want it smaller or bigger, that's fine. You can, you can enlarge or shrink this to whatever size you want. But um, 
if you want, you just have to measure to make sure that this is one inch. If it's too small, then you've probably done fit to page or some sort of shrinking um, on your thing. You want to print actual size or 100%. So, and then I have it in, in centimeters as well if you want that. So that's what that's all about. Okay. You can also, so I'm going to place my, my fabric on here. I'm just kind of centering it. You can place it wherever you want. Um, I like centering it. Uh, it kind of depends what you're planning on doing with things afterwards. But like if you are have a tea towel that you're doing it on, then just place it exactly where you'd want, want the design on your tea towel. Uh, and I'm going to actually tape the fabric on as well. So that's not moving around either. You can tape all four sides. I'm just going to tape the top and bottom so it doesn't, doesn't wiggle. We're wiggle reducing here. All right, so now I'm just going to chill and relax and uh, uh, trace it with my uh, fine line uh, water soluble marker here. So this this works great. Uh, I've, I've used this before on here, but I do do like it. It makes a nice thin line. Uh, if you if you stop drawing and you just hold it on your fabric for a while, then it'll make a bigger it'll spread a little bit, but um, it all comes away, uh, comes off, so it's not going to hurt anything. All right, so this is uh, what I would do if I don't have any of that sulky stick and stitch and if I have a PDF pattern that I'm working on. So now's the time. I'm sure a lot of you might be doing some embroidery if you're stuck at home like we all are. And uh, um, yeah. PDF patterns, that's the way to go. You have them on your computer right away. And like I said, I've, I only, I didn't print out every page. I only printed out the traceable page. So then you just have to do that one, one piece. I bet you, you could probably figure out a way to trace this right from the computer screen if you didn't have a printer. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to figure out how to do that sometime. But yeah, so you could do that as well if you're if you don't have a printer but you wanna do a design. I would just put like I don't know, saran wrap on top of the screen first so it doesn't uh so you're not hurting your monitor, your screen when you're tracing the design. I would maybe suggest that, but I'm sure you could trace trace right onto there. Put some fabric up on the monitor, trace it. I have tried doing that with an iPad <laughs> and it doesn't work as well because uh, it still moves with the touch. It moves everything uh, around. Uh, so that doesn't work so well. So you'd still want, if you have like a piece of glass or something, you'll want to like, you could probably set that on top of your iPad and then trace. But yeah, I'm thinking you can probably do this right from your iPad or computer um, somehow. That'd be a fun, fun experiment sometime. But yeah, I, I love having these digital patterns around. Oh yeah, you could trace on a pencil. Well, it, the, the thing is, if I'm tracing on the screen of the iPad, the, um, you know, you're touching the iPad while you trace, right? And that touching makes the image, you know, go crazy. <laughs> so that's that's what the problem I've I've come come to with the with the iPad with some any sort of like touch device. So you'd have to get bypass that somehow. The being able to zoom in and zoom out with your with your hands. All right. So if you guys are just coming in, I do... Oh, Jenna says that she's traced on the TV before. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and uh, if you guys are just coming in, I am still shipping stuff. Um, I am uh, not interacting with people when I do that. So I can get to my office and uh, ship everything and uh, have someone come pick it up 
without any interaction from other people. <laughs> so uh, I am still shipping, although probably not every day of the week. So um, it'll just be a couple times during the week. So we limit uh, going out. However, like I said, we have no interaction with people at all. Uh, Jen is here. She's, she's one of the people that work with me. Um, I'm asking the people who work with me to stay home, which is just, uh, it's a huge bummer. Um, but you know, we're doing it. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's the deal. So, yep. Now's a great time for digital patterns. But like I said, we'll still be shipping, you know, for a little while yet. But I wanted to let you know that there is no people involved except for, for me. So we're not seeing anybody or um, anybody seeing us. Our refrigerator is stocked with food. I made some soup. We're good to go. So I hope all of you are doing well as well. All right, so it's probably a little hard to see what I'm doing here, so I'll, I'll turn it off for a sec so you can see my progress because I, I, it's difficult to see the blue on the screen here. But I can see it really well here, so let, let's just show you quick. There we go! I'm, I'm getting there, you guys. So uh, I have that going, and I have this little guy here. Ooh, this one's going to be so fun to stitch. So I'm just going to keep going here. So thank you. Oh, you have TP, so you're set. Nice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Flattening the curve. That's what we're doing. I don't know. If, I think, what was it? Like the, I don't know. It was Newsweek or the Wall Street Journal or, or one of them that did a really good um, job of animating what that actually means. So that's been going around and I thought that was really good. Showed the hubs that today. All right, these little honeycombers here. So, also I was saying earlier that um, I've been... Uh, my brother was here this weekend, and uh, I, I know some of you guys saw him here, and... Uh, he helped me on some video stuff. So it doesn't look like it yet, uh, but I am, we figured out some video things. Some of it is gonna be for future things because I need to uh, buy a whole pile of stuff for, for video. So a lot of it's on hold, but we are going to try and do some things on, um, on, YouTube coming up. So we're going to do some YouTube lives. I think I might try my first real one on Saturday. So we'll see. I brought an embroidery kit home to do. I actually bought the brought the bunny embroidery kit home. And I thought I'd try stitching that from beginning to end on Saturday. I don't have a time or anything yet, uh, but I thought I would do that live live on YouTube and we may ultimately transition to there uh, just because I know there's a lot of people are having trouble with Facebook and I'm having trouble with Facebook. Uh, you guys seen a lot of that stuff and a lot of people just don't watch here period because they either don't have a Facebook page uh, or it's just just doesn't work. It just plain the lives just don't work for them. So um, we're trying to rectify that a little bit, and, uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna stay on Facebook here for a while yet. Uh, we'll, we'll do a transition over to there, but I might start doing some weekend shoots on Facebook, some live streams there, and then we'll transition, um, maybe to there as well. Uh, I'll put the and then I'll put the replays here. So uh, if you want to be live, then you'll be at YouTube instead, and I'll still put the replay of the videos here as well. Uh, but the nice thing is that 
on YouTube, you'll be able to see the comments on the side. And uh, it'll, it'll, actually, it'll actually feel a lot like how it does here. Oh, you, Norlene rarely has a problem with Facebook. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, so we'll be doing a combo thing for a little while, but ultimately um, we'll be moving. I'd love to be on both at the same time, but I think technically that's against their terms and service. So I, I have to look that, into that a little bit more, but I may like risk being completely, like my channels being shut down if I do that. So uh, I got to look into that a little bit more. So that's why uh, just one and not both. Yes. So I think Gretchen on, uh, it won't be like what you saw this weekend when I was playing on, on Facebook with the chat. It won't be like that. So I, I know you, you popped into that. It won't be like that. Uh, yes, you should be able to talk to each other. I think it'll work a little bit differently, but you will be able to have that back and forth on on YouTube. And I will tr I'll put together a tutorial and I'm going to look into it a little bit more uh, so you guys can see how how that works. I do know if you want to comment, uh, you'll have to make a profile and they call it making a channel. So I, that, that sounded kind of scary to me, but it's, it's nothing. It's just like making a YouTube or like a, a Facebook profile. You don't even have to put any information on there. You just type in your name. Um, that's just if you want to comment. You can still watch, watch and everything. I know Sarah does it on uh, Facebook and YouTube simultaneously, but I'm not actually sure she should be doing that. Uh, I think that that may be against the, the terms and service. There are programs and stuff that that get it so you can functionally do that, but I'm not. Yeah, I know a modern um, Missouri Star Quilt Company probably does too. I don't know. It's something that I got to look into a little bit more. I, I kind of think it's not totally in at least Facebook's um, terms and service. So I got to look into that. But we'll see. Either of those places could turn turn me off at any time, I suppose. that's They've done that to other people. Um, <laughs> so speaking of that, make sure you're on my email list because if this ever does go down, then I'll still be around <laughs> on, on email for sure. Email they can't uh, take away from me. <laughs> Not that that's going to happen, but I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to dig into it a little bit. Um, but then, then, uh, for sure we'll be doing some YouTube and I don't know. I don't know if we can do both at once. I know we physically can, but I don't know if, you know, company terms and service wise we can. Uh, it does not, this does not smear at all. Like I, I'm not having any trouble with this smearing and I, I just have like these two more guys left. So I'll, I'll show you. I'm, I'm almost done here. I just have these two more leaves. And then we are done tracing. So that didn't, that didn't take long. Okay, so Kathy, you're still, this, the email list still isn't working. I'm going to try and uh, do that again. Yeah, the problem with email is that sometimes servers don't like each other. So I might just be being blocked by your server because they don't like me, Kathy. I don't know why, why that would be. All right. So here we are, you guys, all done tracing, and it looks it looks perfect. It looks totally great. Uh, it doesn't smear like my hand was over it the whole time, not smearing at all. It's just nice and thin lines. If I would just sit on it for a while, let me just show you. Like if I was tracing something and I just kind of sat for a little while on here, you know, then then it does uh, does bleed just a hair, but you know, even with that, that's going to go, it doesn't matter if it really bleeds cause that's going to go away. Um, so that's once we get it with water. So that's not going to be the end of the world for sure. So, all right, I'm going to just take off my little tape pieces and, uh, we are basically ready to start stitching. And that went so quick. I mean, you know, I'm just chilling here talking and, uh, 
you know, 20 minutes later, we're done, done tracing this. And this seemed like kind of like a lot in this design. So, all right, next up, let's slide that out of the way. All right, so I have uh, my embroidery hoop here. And uh, this is that eight inch embroidery hoop. And I have a needle. Ugh, I can never pick this up right off the table. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, so this is a size five embroidery needle. It has a really big eye and it has a, a sharp point as well. Oh, you have trouble getting pens to trace with. I have bought heaps, wash out, air out. Oh, and they stop work out after using them. Oh, that's interesting. I've had this one for a couple years for sure, and it still seems to be okay. I wonder, gosh, I wonder why that would be, Jennifer. Hmm. Let me know what, what brands you're using for that. I'd, I'd be curious uh, about doing a test on that. Uh, Kathy, I typically, when I'm just doing my own stuff, I, I'll typically use a hoop. Although with the Splendid Sampler 2 and some of these other projects that we're working on, they do it without a hoop, uh, like often. So I've been getting used to that. I think certain stitches work well without a hoop, like a stem stitch uh, works well without a, without a hoop. But some some I just like that nice taut hoop. And I, I am a dabber, not a sewer. So the stabbing method of embroidery is where you stab all the way down and pull your thread all the way through and then stab back up and then pull your thread all the way through. And that works really well with a nice taut uh, fabric top. The, a sewing method would be you go in and out in one swoop and then pull it through. And stitches that are good with that are easy with um, without a hoop. Oh, yes, Pat. So I do have, I actually have these now. I didn't have them for a while, but I do have them in the uh, Penguin and Fish shop as well. I do have a direct link for that below as well. All right, so let's get this out. So here's all the floss. Oh, you like stabbing in the hoop? Yep, <laughs> stabbing in the hoop. Oh, so Connie says that sometimes keeping the pens in a Ziploc bag help helps the pens not to dry out. Oh, that's interesting. That's that's a good idea. I should just keep kind of all those pens in there. All righty. So I'm just kind of centering it in the hoop. I had that smaller hoop underneath and then I just, uh, uh, just to show you guys again. So I have the inner hoop here. I'm gonna lay the fabric on top of the inner hoop. With an embroidery hoop, you typically have two hoops, a bigger one and a smaller one. And the bigger one has some sort of closure on it. I loosen that up and then you can stretch it apart like that. Oop. And uh, I just kind of place it over the top and push it push it down. On a hard surface like this table, that's, that's the easiest way to do that, I think. Uh, and then I'll tighten it just a bit. And uh, then uh, I like pulling it taut. So I'm not pulling it... I'm not stretching it. I'm I'm just trying to get like all the like loose looseness out of it. Like you can kind of see, I can push down in here. I, I'm trying to kind of get rid of that. So I like pulling on the sides and then I'll turn and pull top to down. I also don't want to distort my um, character very much. Basically want all the weaving of the threads to be even still. Uh, once it gets good, I, I'll tighten it up a little bit more. See if I need to do any last checks on it. I think that's looking pretty good. And then I'll do just a final tighten there. Okay, so... Oh, really, Robin? Oh my gosh. I don't know if we have a curfew yet. I don't think we have that yet here. All our schools are closed, um, I think, now. And uh, I think they're encouraging bars and everything to be closed soon but I don't think we have a curfew quite yet which I don't know I gotta I gotta get up to date it changes so fast that it's hard to know exactly what's going on I'm gonna have to listen to the local news again all right so again this is my uh oh this is 
wake up here guy. Oh, there we go. So I have on my iPad, I've downloaded, I'll just zoom to the top again. I've downloaded the Bumblebee pattern. So again, if you have the, if you got the bundle or if you just bought the pattern, this will be in your email receipt. Just click the download now button. That's all I did. I clicked the download now and it opened up in a window. You can print from here or I just have it open on my iPad here. So this is the finished. I'm going to zip ahead some info. I'm going to skip ahead to here. So this is what's going to tell me uh, where, what I stitch and where and what color. So uh, here are the stitches that we're going to use. We're going to do back stitch, lazy daisy stitch, French knots, and chain stitches with this piece. Uh, let's see. So uh, the thick lines, so there's two, only two thick lines, the bumblebee body and the head, those are the two thick lines. Those are chain stitches. So we'll do chain stitches around there on the head. Uh, we got the lazy daisies. That's all of our cute little petals. It's also these right here. And French knots, we got all the, the uh, middle of the flowers are French knots, his little antennae and uh, the eyes. And backstitch are all of our outlines. So that is the plan. Uh, I usually like working, well, first of all, I like picking what I want to work on because it's the most fun. So I'm going to actually start with the bee. I want to, I want to get that guy done. I don't want to, I don't want to do a whole border and not do the fun bee. So I'm going to do the bee first. Um, so to decide what to, what to do, what to stitch first, uh, I like stitching whatever is the farthest back first and whatever's the most in front last. So, and I'll show you kind of what I mean by that. So this body, that yellow body and headline, see how it feels like it's in front of the wings and look how it's kind of covering up these, um, these lines here, the, be the belly lines. Uh, I, I want that same feel when I stitch. So I want, this uh, circle to feel like it's on top of all these other stitches. So to do that, I'm gonna actually physically stitch those things first and then do uh, the part that I want on top last. So I think, I think I might start, you know what? I think I might just start with some of these wings. Those are kind of cute. So let's do that. All right, so let's uh, go to our, so first of all, it's that blue color and it's the back stitch. So it's uh, it's an outline and it's that, that blue color. So that's what we're looking at here. All righty, so blue. Blue is part of this little roll here and feel free to use whatever colors you like, you know, I'm excited to actually see what you guys use. So if you are working on this project, uh, please share in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see what colors you chose, how your stitches are looking and, and all that. So I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I rolled them all up at one in one uh, uh, for the bundle just because it, it's all the same length. Um, but you know, you won't have this issue if you're using your own thread. It's easier if you're getting the bundle to unroll it all at once. And I, I'm doing um, about 24 inches or so. So I'm just going to unroll all the colors to that 24 inch and then I'll just trim it uh, and then I'll set this aside. And I only need the blue right now. So I'm gonna take the blue out. I always like stitching with about 24 inches of thread. So I know that, you know, when it's time to use these colors, I'll just have them all ready to go already. Okay. So next up, the other thing I like doing is deciding how much floss I want to use. So uh, you can use all, all uh, six strands of floss. So this is em embroidery. Six strand embroidery floss is made up of six strands. So if I split these up, just like hit them, bop them a little bit, you'll see there'll be six different strands here. They come apart super duper easily and that's on purpose. Uh, it's so that the person stitching can decide how many they want to use. And what you're deciding really is how thick you want your lines. So I, I made up this guide uh, with you guys. We stitched this here once. 
This is my floss thickness guide. So already this, this floss is stitched with six strands of the floss and this thickness guide is only stitched with a single strand. So here you can see kind of my guide. Here's all six strands. That's as if we would just stitch it with this without doing anything, without splitting it at all. That would be the six strands. You know, then this is five strands, four strands, three strands, two strands, one strands, one strand. I know that two strands is a pretty popular uh, thickness that people like uh, in embroidery land. I always go with three. I don't know. I've just been doing that ever since I started with embroidery. I, I like this. So you can see it's, it's not so thick as the six strand. Uh, I kind of like I kind of like that width, and it's not so skinny as this single strand. So I'm gonna do the three strands. It is totally up to you uh, how thick you want your lines, but you, like far from far away, you can really tell the difference with them there. So all right. Oh, what's the twelfth? Oh, so this is um this is these are some other things. So this is pearl cotton floss. So if you some of you might have seen this before. So this is a floss that it's all twisted really tightly. That is different than embroidery floss. Embroidery floss it's easy to take the the pieces of floss apart. Pearl floss it's really difficult. You won't be able to. Um so this is actually one strand of pearl size 5. So it comes in like size five, size seven, size nine. Um, this is the size five. So I have a comparison. So size five pearl is pretty similar to using all six strands of floss, really. Then 12, one and 12, two. Uh, 12 means the 12 weight uh, just thread. So this is just like some straight thread but it's it's um 12 weight so it's thicker than our normal sewing thread so it's called 12 weight so this is 12 weight with just one strand so just like this and then this is 12 weight with two strands so that is you know just the two together so that is the difference there and you know the the two strands is around about the four strands of just embroidery floss. And then Y is just some yarn I had. <laughs> I don't even know. It's not bulky. Um, it's not, I, I'm not quite sure how thick this yarn is, but that's what the Y is if I wanted to stitch with yarn. So anyway, I, you know, if you want to make up one of these guides, go for it. I think it's super handy to have around and you can do a variety. Like you could do all different thicknesses throughout. Like we could do like really delicate thin wings with the one. And then we could do, you know, really fat stitching around here with the six strands. It's really up to you. Uh, just to stay consistent, I'm going to just do the three strands for my whole piece here. But if you guys decide to do uh, more than one, for sure, uh, share in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. I want to see, see what it looks like, or more than more than one uh, thickness. All right, so I'm just bopping these ends a little bit to separate them. I'm going to separate them one at a time. So I'm going to take the one one strand, and I'm holding the rest in my fingers, and I'm just going to pull. It's all going to bunch up behind me, all crazy. And once the strand comes out, it just kind of releases. And I just run my hand through it and there's no knots, no nothing. Easy peasy. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of magic actually. So let's do that two more times. I find this easier than, than uh, trying to pull, t pull like three strands apart. Uh, you know, pull both ends like apart like this. Uh, that can get more tangled more easily than just finding one strand. Zoop and uh, pulling it right out. So I'm pulling, you have to do it in single strands though. Uh, th uh, if you try to pull more than th more than one strand at once, it'll get all tangled. So one strand at a time, and then you just put it back together. It goes so quickly. It really is nice. All right, there we are. I just run my hands through it and then we have our floss all together there. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to actually put a knot in one side of this. I'm going to actually stitch this so we have no knots on our back at all. Uh, it ends up with a really nice clean back and none of our other threads will catch on the knots. So I, I really love a nice smooth back. And to do that, 
you uh, you don't want any knots on the back. So I'm making a temporary knot here, and uh, uh, I'm gonna thread my needle here. I do the pinch method where I, I just kind of pinch with my fingers and then I start undoing my fingers and the moment I see the thread there, I shimmy it on the top and pull it through. Ooh, yes, metallic floss would be gorgeous. Okay, so I am gonna stitch this big ol' um, wing up here first, I think. So I'm gonna start right here. So I wanna start with my, my little knot here. I wanna start from the front, and I wanna start about four inches away from that point and not within the path. So I don't wanna go here because I'll be cutting across that wing. So I'm gonna put from the front to the back right here. And this will make sense later. This is called an away knot. We're gonna actually weave this in later. But for now, we are gonna pretend that's not there and we are gonna just start stitching. So I'm gonna do a back stitch all the way around here. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go this direction. So for a back stitch, you actually start a stitch ahead of where you wanna go. And you go backwards from the direction you wanna go. So I'm gonna go backwards one little stitch there. There we go. And our next stitch, I'm gonna come up about a stitch length away. And I'm, I'm going, yeah, I'm going a little more than an eighth of an inch, less than a quarter of an inch for these stitches. For sure less than a, a quarter inch. About an eighth of an inch is what I do. You can go smaller. I know some people go around a sixteenth of an inch. It really uh, can be whatever you like. I actually kind of vary it per pieces. Uh, if I'm on a long straightaway like this, I oftentimes make my stitches bigger because I feel like it's just faster. And then if I really need to get a nice curve, uh, especially like right here, that's a pretty tight curve, uh, then I will um, make my stitches smaller just to mimic that circular shape a little bit better. So there we are. I'm just going to cruise along. Again, I'm coming up a stitch stitch uh, length away, and I'm going in the exact same hole that I started in there with the last stitch. And that is the back stitch, easy peasy. And I'm just kind of rotating my piece as I go, just, uh, just how it feels best in my hand. And I always like, um, I like my hand, my left hand, whatever hand's holding the hoop, I actually have it feel the back of my stitches. I have it feel the needle. So I am actually, I feel like I have like a third eye back here with, with my hand. I can feel if, there, if a knot comes because I'm having it go through my fingers. I can feel if anything just is off. So I always just kind of rotate so that hand feels, feels the most comfortable. Oh, you keep making the 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 way not too short. Yes, yeah, so you do want to be a little generous here. You can kind of see what we're doing here. So we've made just a long piece of thread here with our away knot. So later we'll actually cut this off and we'll weave in this end to to that spot there. We really only have to do that if there's no other stitches around, like when you start a project. Otherwise, we'll just weave into the backs of the current stitches, and I'll show you guys that, too, for sure. But for now, we are going to just chill and go around this. This would be a really cute one, I think, for uh, tea towels. I kind of want to just start a tea towel collection. All of our, uh, except for I, I'm scared about hurting all our cute cute embroideries because we kind of plow through these tea towels in our kitchen. All of ours are just like full of coffee stains and all that. Hey Kathy, so I am using just a white, uh, it's a bleached muslin. It's just a 100% cotton muslin. I like using a muslin because the holes are a little bit bigger and I just think that's it's just really easy to stitch through. But like a white, a white quilting weight fabric or a white like Kona fabric uh, 
would work really well too. Sometimes those, uh, sometimes those tightly woven quilting fabrics, like sewing fabrics, a lot of times that will, it'll be a little bit more difficult to pull the needle through just because it's so tightly weaven, woven, especially if you are using all six strands. With three strands, it's not quite so hard, like this part here, to pull that through. That can be a little bit difficult if you have a really tightly woven fabric and a lot of strands of floss. Uh, but I, I like the muslin. Yeah, it's just it's just so available and it's just so easy for for embroidery. I mean, it's it's a little more transparent, so people might not like that as much. But it's so easy to put a needle through. I, I just really like it. So I, I use um, bleached muslin and unbleached muslin, just whatever whatever I'm feeling like at the time. And this could could always be sewn onto. A different fabric later. Oh, I think I have just enough thread really. Well, no, I think I'll I'll be able to get a few more stitches on the next next wing, I think. All right, I have one more back stitch for for this guy. Oh, I could maybe get two. Let's do two. You kind of have to judge as you approach the end of your row uh how many stitches you have left. And it's like, oh, is that worth one stitch? Is it worth two? You can do either. You'll just end up with, you know, some smaller stitches or some bigger stitches, but all in all, it's all going to feel, feel as similar. Oh yes, linen is super nice to use too. Linen, uh, the needle goes through really easily. I like that. Oh, you like linen muslin. Oh, it always looks organic and vintage. Oh, that's true. Like a nice textured linen or, um, linen, uh, cotton blend or something like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty. All right, you can see I'm kind of running low on thread. I'm going to do a few more stitches and then we will finish. I'm definitely not going to make it all the way around this wing. But we'll get our next our next strand started. All right. Oh, I can squeeze maybe two more stitches out of here. I need enough on my needle to weave in the ends. All right, I think we'll stop there. I could probably squeeze out one or two more, but let's let's uh, see that. So, oh, look at here's our back so far. So now, now instead of tying a knot right here, I'm gonna weave in the rest of this floss into the backs of my stitches, just kind of like that. But I'm gonna do it three times. Uh, I find that it's that third time that kind of locks it in place. And I think this is as strong as just tying a knot, especially if you're going to wash it a lot, like in a, like if you're doing a tea towel. It also makes the back really pretty. So you can see, I'm going to just trim this. Uh, that was the third time and I'm going to just trim it right next to the stitches, right, right there. So look how clean that looks. There's no knot. Uh, everything is being held in there by weaving it back and forth three times. And there's no even like fuzzle at the end there. It's just super clean. Like this might as well be the front really, right? So this is great for, um, for a tea towel. So, all right, now we are gonna deal with this thing here. So that little knot that we started out with, I'm going to uh, snip those, snip that away, and then we'll weave in that end as well. And that's the magic of the away knot. See, now I got this little guy. Let's thread that and weave that in. Do I, Carol is asking, do I have any projects that, that I work on offline besides designing and running the business? Uh, it's pretty much that. I do, I mean, most of the stuff that I'm, I, I make, <laughs> I make here with you guys. So if I want to try out a project or tr if I get like excited about something like, oh, I got to make that granny square quilt. <laughs> uh, then I try and uh, make it a project with you guys here and see if anyone else wants to do it. So uh, most of the things I end up doing here, there are a lot of unfinished projects that, that um, I'll do occasionally. Um, other than that, 
I pretty much do the business stuff. <laughs> So there's draw like I like drawing and that that everything always ends up here though basically with you guys here. All right, there we go. We wove in that end three times as well too. And look, no knots. There's nothing for us to catch on. Uh, just good to go. There's always house projects. There's always there's always other projects. But if it's crafting related, then uh, it usually comes on here at some point. <laughs> so you guys are basically seeing everything. Yep, the sheep pillow. I have not worked on that yet uh, since probably you guys saw it last. Uh, oh gosh, I should do an inventory of all my unfinished projects again here soon. Actually, we are going to have a whole extra week this week. Um, that we could fill with some unfinished projects. Uh, so next week, so this week we're going to be working on the bumblebee. Uh, next week we'll be working on the new Orophil block of the month. And I know some of you guys saw that. So the new Orophil block of the month has come out, the quilt block of the month. I'm going to be a part of that. So my block will be in July. Uh, so it is uh, March. March's block just came out. So we'll work on that next week. But we actually have a little crossover week. So the end of March, beginning of April week, we have open to kind of do whatever we want. So if there is a project that you want us to work on during that time, uh, let me know because we get like a bonus week this week before um, working on our normal projects again. All right, so now we're starting a new piece of thread. This is just the, the leftover three strands that I pulled from earlier when we got those threads. Uh, I am not going to do the away knot this time because uh, I am going to just weave into the stitches I already have. So I'm going to stitch right here. You know, maybe we do... You know, we could start early. You know, maybe I actually... That could be a YouTube week too, potentially. We'll see about that. Maybe we'll do, um, you know, I'm wanting to do some YouTube tests. So I'll do, I'm gonna do a YouTube this weekend on Saturday, I think, a YouTube live. And we could maybe like trade off days. I don't know, we'll see. I, got, I still have to, a lot to figure out with the YouTube yet, so we'll we'll try it on we'll try it on Saturday and then see see what happens after that. But yeah, there are some unfinished things. You know, I have a whole pile of, you know, I never got a design for the triangle tangle quilt. We got that going yet. I have the back of the I Love Home quilt. There are just so many. Oh man, I gotta stop listing them, otherwise I'm gonna go crazy. So many unfinished little projects here and there. All right, let's uh, let's finish this uh, wing tonight yet. So I'm just going to, I w wove it in the edges, the ends, I mean, and now I'm just going to start up where I left off right away. Simple, simple. Oh, that's a good idea. You need to list your, your unfinished projects. Oh, if you guys are unsure what UFO means, I know, I, I think I've probably been saying it. And you might have seen it in the crafting and quilting community, this term UFO. That means unfinished objects, basically. So that's what people say when they are talking about all their unfinished projects laying around. their UFOs. Oh, you have an Irish dinner plan for tomorrow's home St. Pat's celebration. Oh, that's actually a good idea, Gretchen. We did actually cook a roast... I mean, it's not like corned beef or anything, but we did cook a roast uh, when my brother was here, and uh, and we have leftovers from that, and we also have some sauerkraut. That that's that's good. Throw that Irish stuff together, right? Maybe that's more German. I don't know, <laughs> but we'll have to do some sort of combo of that. Oh, corned beef—that'd be so good. All right, I think we got like three more stitches here and we are good. So I do have a lot of thread left over. Uh, I do have, I do have these to do, but instead of jumping over here, I'll probably start fresh. Although now that I'm thinking of it, 
I might just leap over here. So I don't usually do that. So I'll show you what I mean. Let me finish this stitch. I'm going to leap. I never do this, but I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it now. I'm going to leap all the way over and start this wing over here instead of um, weaving in the end here and starting fresh. And the reason that I think this is okay this time is because look where it lands. So I don't normally do this because I don't want toe catchers is what we've been calling them. I don't want like these big loops on the back that can get caught on things. But look, this one happens to be crossing over all of these stitches and there's so many of these stitches. So I think um, we might actually cover up or I'm going to attempt to cover up this, like hold this down with all the stitches from here. Although now that I'm thinking of it, I think the stitches for here, I'll go up and down. So I might not actually go on this line, but I think I'm going to on purpose try and tack this down with, um, with these stitches. Uh, that way I don't have to start a whole new fresh uh, thread right away. I can just keep going. So tonight, uh, I'll probably go for a few more minutes here. I'm going to go till I'm done with this piece of floss, and that shouldn't take very long. I think we'll probably get this this uh, wing done, though. So tomorrow, we'll, we'll be able to start stitching right away, which will be awesome. I think we can get really far on the actual B here. Maybe even finish the B. You know what? I bet you for sure we'll finish this B. Because we did all the tracing and stuff today. I think we can do it. So I think I might go... Oh, I'll be at the office either tomorrow or Wednesday. So uh, I do have a couple more of these bundles left. I think I have like three of them left. So if you snag one of those, I'll still send it this week. Uh, along with any other kits or any of any of that, but yeah, just just a reminder, I'm not physically seeing or being where anyone else is, <laughs> so I feel like even though I'm driving my car over to the office, um, I just have to open the door with a with a uh, a uh, a tissue or whatever, and then I will have like no contact with anybody so uh Isolation is still me driving over to the office. So I will be able to do some orders yet, at least this week. Who knows where things will be at next week. So, <laughs> uh, but just, I, I'm not going to be interacting with anybody on any of those trips. And all the mail is, uh, is um, picked up without me or anybody else, any other um person except for the mailman being involved so we will not cross paths with people by shipping shipping any items out at least for this week again who knows what we're going to do next oh uh, Kathy you can go to penguinandfish.com uh, there should be a link in this Facebook post for that too but it's penguin uh, andfish.com and right on the front there'll be a link for the um embroidery here. All right, so I'm I have a few a little bit more floss left, so I'm going to just do as much as I can on on this wing. Oh man, I'm definitely missing some of you guys' conversation. I'm going to have to read it afterwards. I want to make sure that all you guys are doing well and are healthy and and if you're not just let us know because we want to, you know, this is our little family. And uh, if you're new, you are part of our family too. So uh, keep us updated with how you're feeling and how, how, you know, your family and everything is doing too. All right. I think I'm going to get yeah, two or three more stitches. I think I can squeeze out of here. I, I have to cut a whole new piece of floss anyway. Because uh, I think this guy up here is blue, so I mean I don't really have to preserve 
you know, I don't really have to get all the stitches out of here. Because uh, I, I, I'm going to have to cut another piece of thread anyway. If this is my last uh, little bit and I only had this much more and I didn't have any more blue, I might try and work out how to get like two more stitches out of here. But we're going to just do this one more and then that will be, that'll be our last. All right, let's weave in the ends here. Okay, wow, yeah, totally missing something, but I'll I'll check later in the comments. Okay, and uh, that's the second part, and third right here. <laughs> no, Lee, that's fun. Uh. All right, let's snip that. And there we go, there's the back. I always love looking at the back. So again, we got that toe catcher there, which I don't, I don't like, I don't normally do, but all the stitches from when we do this, this black uh, band area, we will, we will um, do all of that. We'll, we'll tack all this down so that it won't be a toe catcher anymore there. But look, there is no, no knots, no nothing. I think it is just as pretty on the back right now as the front, and I just love that. So there we are, you guys. That's uh, to trace all this. I wasn't sure we would um, get done tracing this, really, because this seemed like a pretty busy one, but that didn't take long at all. Uh, we got the two wings done, and I'm, I'm doing it chill and slow tonight. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we'll try and see how much we can get done, but I'm having fun with this. So tomorrow we'll do more back stitches for all this, but I think tomorrow for sure we will start doing the chain stitch, and that's that's uh, we'll go around here and here. We might even get some of these French knots started in here as well. So a whole pile of stitches tomorrow, but we'll start again with the uh, the back stitches. So awesome, you guys. I'm going to flip you around and we'll take a look at this too. There. Hello again, everyone. So <laughs> getting situation situated here. All right. So uh, again, this is our embroidery of the month. It is the B. The B embroidery. Oh, I should show you on the show you on the iPad again here. All right, so that's that's our guy, and our finished one is gonna look like this. So we got all those pretty flowers to do, and that chain stitch. That's what I'm excited about. I love doing the chain stitch, and then all this black here. That's what's gonna cover up that that toe catcher. So we'll work on this tomorrow yet. And the rest of this week. So this is this is our first, <laughs> I guess, quarantine project. And I am going to try to do a YouTube live on Saturday. So I will let you know later this week when that's gonna be. I have not planned it yet, but I it's just an idea. <laughs> so all right. Oh, Amy, um I saw that you said you were messaging me, but I couldn't find the message. So sometimes I'm very confused with Facebook, so I will I will check it out, uh, Amy, after after this and let you know. I'll try and find that message. Uh, but yeah, so that is that, and it's at penguinandfish.com if you want to join in with us here. Uh, like I said, I think we have uh, about three of the bundles left. I might make up one more uh, with the stuff here tonight, so let's say four bundles left. And uh, then the, the, the digital pattern is available um, for the rest of the month here. So the digital pattern, you'll get emailed to you right away. It'll be in your email receipt. And actually, if you get the bundle, you'll still get the digital pattern and that will be in your email receipt as well. So awesome, you guys. Thank you again for joining me here. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.